Fresh Israeli airstrikes on Gaza have reportedly left one Palestinian dead and several others injured. Earlier, the Israeli military confirmed it's preparing for a possible large-scale attack. It's three years since around 1,400 Palestinians were killed during a three-week-long offensive. RT's Paula Sleer has more from Jerusalem. For several days now, the Israeli-Gaza border has been tense. Four Palestinians were killed and several others were injured in a series of targeted airstrikes carried out by the Israeli Air Force. At the same time, a number of rockets were fired by Palestinian militants into southern Israel. Now, last night, Wednesday evening, the Israeli Defense Force did confirm that it is preparing a large-scale military operation in Gaza. It says that operation will be varied and different to the last operation that was carried out there three years ago. What we're hearing is that the purpose of this operation will be to enhance Israeli deterrence. Now, we are receiving reports that Khaled Michel, who is Hamas's political bureau chief, has called for all attacks on Israeli civilians to be halted. This comes in light of the recent reconciliation deal that was signed between rival Palestinian faction groups Hamas and Fatah in Cairo, and this would be because of fear of a massive Israeli retaliation. This Tuesday marked three years since the last Israeli operation in Gaza that Israelis refer to as Operation Cast Lead. That operation lasted about three weeks. Nearly one and a half thousand Palestinians were killed. Four out of five of them were civilians. What we're hearing from the Israeli army this time around is that this operation will be much shorter and that the Israelis will employ much greater use of firepower. But certainly it is still too soon to say what will happen. Well, for more on this story, I'm now joined live by Gideon Levy, who's a columnist with the Haaretz newspaper. Thanks for being with us. Mr. Levy, how do you see the situation developing? How determined is Israel to launch a new offensive on Gaza? Hopefully not. Uh, there is no real reason for launching another attack. Uh, but the rhetoric in Israel uh, in the last days is becoming uh, more and more harsh. And you know, rhetorics by itself can lead to changing reality or to a new attack. For Israel, there is no reason whatsoever to launch another attack. And there are also new geopolitical conditions now. There is a new Egypt around. And I'm not sure that Egypt will uh, remain indifferent vis-a-vis uh, -vis another brutal attack of Israel on Gaza. So. Are, are you Unless saying that, are, that Israel might Israel... be afraid of any kind of repercussions? Because three years ago, we uh, saw an offensive that killed some 1,500 Palestinians, 13 Israelis, yet no one was held responsible. Has that given Israel a carte blanche uh, to do what it wants without fear of repercussion? Or are you saying that the situation has now changed them to actually think about what could happen if they do launch a full-scale attack? Yeah, three years ago, Israel had a carte blanche, and not only a carte blanche, the West had applauded Israel and, uh, and didn't say a word against this attack. But this time, we are facing a new Egypt, and Gaza is in the backyard of Egypt. And I'm not sure that Egypt will remain indifferent vis-a-vis -vis another attack. But having said this, I'm not sure that this is enough to prevent an attack, because unfortunately, Israeli politicians and generals not always react in a most rational and logical way. It seems like you're saying that, that it could go either way, that you do think an attack is possible, but uh, it won't necessarily happen. Uh, there are reports that the head of Hamas has ordered an end to attacks on Israeli targets, but we keep seeing rockets being fired from Gaza. So why is Hamas's leadership in Gaza undermining attempts to prevent uh, any kind of escalation in violence? First of all, not everyone in Israel listens carefully to the new voices in the Hamas, and there are new voices. It's very clearly so. Hamas, in the recent days, is speaking in a new language. It's not only about not launching any terror actions, but it's also about recognizing Israel in the 67 borders one way or the other. But Israel, unfortunately, is not listening to this, those voices and is, as usual, may be missing another opportunity by ignoring those voices who come from Hamas. And uh, this is very regrettable. 
Uh, we're also hearing very offensive rhetoric coming from Israel. Do you think Israel has its own plan, uh, which doesn't exactly include any kind of dialogue with the Palestinians? Ah, this is not my view. That's uh, crystal clear. The current government of Israel has no serious intention about a serious dialogue with the Palestinians. Maybe some photo opportunities, but nothing more than this. And uh, the PA, the Palestinian Authority, had just launched another proposal for Israel to get back to the negotiation table. They even gave up the precondition of freezing the settlements, which is a minimum uh, a condition and they had suggested just a symbolic release of 100 Palestinian prisoners to get back to the negotiation table and what did Israel say no if we were to see uh, and I know this is a, of course is all still very much speculation some kind of full-scale attack do you think it would be possible that we would see reaction from the international community in terms of a possible UN imposed mm -hmm. no-fly zone what and how will the world react to, uh, to an attack? You must uh, differentiate here between the public opinions in the world who already in cast led, in cast led one, maybe I have to say, was quite disgusted and quite critical about the Israeli attack and the positions of the governments in Europe and elsewhere. I think that uh, Israel still has this carte blanche, especially in an election year in the United States. Uh, no uh, American uh, will raise his voice against, uh, no official will raise his voice against Israel in an election year. And Europe, unfortunately, also supports one way or the other. Uh, the Israeli occupation and the Israeli attacks. So I guess that even if the tone will be more critical this time, still I don't think that uh, it will get to any kind of actions against Israel. All right, speaking to us live from Tel Aviv, Gideon Levy, a columnist with Haaretz newspaper. Thank you for your time.